Mystery is clearly the foundation stone upon which all your art and poetry are built. It is an essential ingredient which you stir into your daydreams, like fog to thicken them, and it is no less essential to your physicists. Much of your mythology has linked animals to the firmaments and the movements of planetary bodies. Therefore, you thought it was inside animals that many of the clues to life must lie. And when you found nothing inside them to satisfy your inquiring minds about the movements of the stars, you ate them, hoping to absorb the knowledge which you thought they must have digested. During the short time that we fairies tried your language, we soon found ourselves falling into the routines you have been subjected to during several millennia of protracted linguistic agony. There was even one fairy punctuation mark that was so small it frequently went unobserved. And this tiny speck meant that everything prior to it was complete and utter bunkum. In that very short period of time during which we spoke and wrote, we found ourselves correcting one another's grammar Fairy myths began to spring up regarding where we had come from and where we were supposed to be going. Suddenly we began to worry about things like doubt and anxiety. But our short affair with language did enable us to add another vocabulary of movements to our gestures. Language led you humans to question a lot of things, like space. Since we had come from outer space, we'd really had it without there. A lot of your myths have a visual origin, imaginary lines drawn between stars in a sort of celestial join the dots. Fairy myths, however, have sprung from another sense altogether, the sense of humour. Fairy monologues, dialogues and trialogues, three fairies all speaking at once, are extremely popular routines in all our music halls. Given that laughter leads to fairy reproduction, Mr Smith, the fairy proprietor of a well-known fairy music hall, always includes at least one of these speaking acts. When fairies double up with laughter, the size of the proprietor's audience also doubles. If Mr Smith charged on the way in, he would only get half as much. So, in order to reap the full benefit of such hilarity, he always charges on the way out. Our foundation stone is versatility which flows like warm honey from the hive, where our queen bee, nature, draws attention to herself as much as anyone on a high wire or on a bus. 